<laughs> Today we're reviewing Stranded, a point-and-click adventure indie game made and released by Curve Studios, a studio that unfortunately many of us probably have never heard of, and designed by a game designer, Peter Moorhead, who actually, thankfully, the majority of us have never heard of. What can I say about the game? It features stunning art and music that combines to create one of the most atmospheric games I've played in years, but it's not a game in the traditional sense. You don't play it so much as you experience it, much like you would experience any work of art. But let's jump into the review. This game, in a word, is atmospheric. The soundtrack is beautiful and drives a sense of exploration, and the pixel art style is incredibly well done and beautiful to view, if not repetitive after a few hours. After playing through the game several times with this review, I began to notice how, depending on the area, I would see the exact same rocks in the foreground with a slightly different background. The game switches from night to day as you play, and this kind of relieves some of that tedium, but not enough. During the day, the world feels baked and unforgiving, but at night it feels alive and beautiful. But then, you have to suffer the lost-inspired introduction every time you open the game or try to switch from night to day, and thankfully, you could skip it. I played through what I assume was the entire game about five times, each time being slightly different, but not different enough to justify the endless backtracking. I continued to play, expecting something wonderful to happen, but instead I found myself backtracking through the same eight areas, the same unchanging temples to activate the same letter beacons, to then be faced with, would you like to start over? Which in fact was about the only text I actually encountered in the entire game. Upon starting the game, there is no friendly welcome to inform you of control schemes or even storyline. There is no feedback to make the player wish to continue. If anything, every aspect of how the game plays is pushing the player away. The controls of this game are another matter. They are incredibly clunky to the point of frustration. In fact, your character's movement is scripted so tightly that for a game selling itself on exploration, it allows very little free exploration. To move, you basically click in the direction you want to travel. Simple, yes, but not really in practice. The controls frequently either don't respond or do the opposite of what you'd expect. Overall, I'd say Mr. Moorhead and Curve Studios have designed a game that in no way rewards the player for the price of admission. There is no sense of progression within the game beyond the player tracking their own progress and the minute changes between playthroughs, but this ultimately becomes frustrating and just plain annoying. This is an art game that seems to exist only as a notch on its studio's belt. It features a beautiful soundtrack and lovely art style, and creates an atmosphere that is at first tranquil and enjoyable, but eventually becomes maddening as the lack of feedback or sense of progression drives the player away. As a game, I give it a 6.5 out of 10. It is strong on atmosphere, but fails to deliver on the game side of things. It releases on Steam on the 20th of May at $8. Although I assume $8, as that's the only price I can find in relation to it online. Is it worth $8? No. But it is a game worth picking up in the next Steam sale.